Hello. For my fifth video, I'll actually hold a camera in my hands. This is my camera. This is a Sony A7 III. This is a Tamron uh, 28 to 75, 2.8. Uh, I love it. I need to shoot more with it. I'll probably do a video about it, even though it came out like two years ago and the world did a video about it already, but I'll still babble about it. So. I want to talk to you today about something, um, how do I put it, um, we, if you buy one of these and you don't know how to use a camera, you'd open up the manual, um, or maybe you wouldn't, uh, and you would see all these modes, mode dial, so there's the mode dial, and see on the mode dial there's a bunch of letters, uh, PASM, uh, a couple of custom nodes, and a green auto mode. The green auto mode is, I don't know what I'm doing. Like if I handed this to my daughter, um, who's five, I would put it in green and say, here you go, honey, have fun. But um, the next mode up is P, which is program, I guess it stands for. Um, it's kind of baby mode also. Um, I actually don't know a difference on this camera. On my previous camera, the green would like use a flash if it thought it needed it but the P mode would not. Um, on the Sony cam that doesn't have a built-in flash, I honestly don't know the difference. But, so you would think um, if you're shooting, I'll put it in P and the camera will choose the best thing for me. Um, it would take you one time with a kit lens, uh, you know, the lens that the, the camera came with, one time in a darker room to realize that the camera doesn't know what it wants. The camera is very poor at making those choices. Even this camera, which is a very good camera, cannot make those choices for you um, because you bought a camera like this. You need to know how to how to make some basic choices. So um, I'm going to get you to manual is my goal in this video, and I'll hopefully be short. Um, but I want you to start with the uh, the next two, which are A and S, uh, first. And I want you to understand them. I'll try to be brief. Now, if you have a Canon, they're going to say um, AV and TV. I think, is it AV and TV? They're going to be slightly different, but they're going to do the same thing. So A or AV um, is called aperture priority. And that means you're telling the camera, I want you to, um, to uh, suck in this much light and you handle the rest. So put on aperture priority and you'll see a number that you can adjust. And this lens goes down to 2.8. 2.8 is for shooting in darker areas. And um, it'll go all the way up to F22 if you're in like the Sahara at noon, maybe. Uh, but F22, you don't ever wanna go that high. So that's one way of doing it. And so the other one is shutter priority and shutter is how fast the camera um, gate opens and closes uh, this is all mirrorless so it's really no longer true anymore now it's just all faked in computers but isn't everything um, basically shutters uh, go from like uh, one four thousandth of a second maybe all the way up to um, this shutter, you can actually, I can do a thing where I can hold down a button on my phone to just leave it open if I wanted to. Um, but usually like, um, I shot some star pictures. I'll try to dump one in here. Someone's texting me, it's a very professional video we're doing. Um, a, a picture of, this, of the night sky with my uh, wide angle lens. Uh, the shutter stays open for 15 seconds. Um, so you can do all kinds of stuff like that, but if you try to take a picture of your five-year-old daughter running across the backyard of a shutter of anything over you know, under of like five seconds, it'll just be a blur, a mess. Um, you have to have a tripod to do anything like that and you have to shoot things that don't move. Um, so shutter priority, if you put it on that, uh, that's a really good one for when you first get a camera because as long as you know that like anything over, let's say one four hundredth of a second, is gonna kind of freeze time to where you're not, you know, like that. Like if I'm doing my arm like this and I do one 400th of a second, then my arm will stop, you know? 
But if I do like 1 20th of a second, my arm will just be a blur. This is a great, this is a great illustration. So those are the two things really you need to worry about. But what if I told you there was one more thing you need to worry about and it's called ISO. So here's what I didn't tell you about. I didn't tell you about ISO because there's not a button for it or a, a selector for it. ISO is film. Um, in the film days, you would buy different kinds uh, the, the film you buy would have an ISO number associated with it. ISO 100, bright light, sunlight, um, ISO 800, interior. I don't actually know how high old film ISO went, but those are typical numbers for ISO. It's like it doubles, like 100, 200, 400. Uh, I think some, sometimes there's a 500. It is super weird. All these numbers are weird, but you don't really need to think about them too hard. So. This camera and a lot of modern cameras have an auto ISO mode. And what you do is you tell it, I want you from, I want you to use ISO at your best judgment from like ISO 100, which is for basically no ISO, all the way up to ISO, I think I have this at 16,000. Uh, some of the lesser cameras, I would probably go a little less on that, you know, maybe, uh, um, I don't know, ISO. 5,000 or something and it really depends on the camera so that's probably already on for you if you buy a camera but it might be something you need to look into and set up but it's super easy because once you have it set up here's the cool thing and here's how you learn how to shoot in manual so my daughter's outside playing in the backyard I'm gonna put it on f8 f8 is kind of in the middle daylight uh, aperture um, I'm going to put the shutter speed on uh, one four hundredth of a second. I'm going to hold the shutter halfway down on this camera and a lot of cameras, almost every modern camera I've ever touched. And if there's auto ISO on it, it's going to tell me what it thinks the ISO should be. So if I do that and it says ISO 5000, I'll be like, whoa, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? Because I'm doing something wrong. And what it's telling me is, is that it needs to bump up that ISO to make a good picture. So that will immediately make me question my choices. I'm like, well, let me bump the uh, aperture down to like four instead of eight. And then all of a sudden the ISO is like 600 or 500. I'm like, oh, good. Because it's under a thousand. On modern cameras, you're good. You're totally good. I mean, you want to get weird, you can, you can play with it. So I use the auto ISO within limits. I don't let it go all the way up to this will go to like half a million, which is stupid, and it's just a big blurry mess when you open it up on your computer. You don't want it. Um, but I set it kind of in towards the low end, and I let it be my guide. And I learned to do that on my first Nikon, and it taught me, it teaches you now when you see a scene, you're like, oh yeah, that looks like about F4. You know, oh, it's really bright out here. This is F11 situation. That's what I say to people all the time. They look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, we're, we're F11 right now. Um, the other thing that, 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 what I'm telling you to do, the other thing you have to worry about is shutter speed. And that's another thing. The more you shoot, and when you go, when you shoot and get home, and put your, um, sorry, I thought my camera was shutting off. It didn't. When you shoot stuff, and you come home, and you plug into your computer, load it up in Lightroom or whatever you use, and you see a blurry mess, go look at what your shutter speed was. If you're in Lightroom, you can easily see. And, and, and I guess you have to enjoy that process, which I do like too much, but I'll be like, oh, I was at, you know, um, one one hundredth of a second. And you know, my dog is just a big furry mess, you know, but if I'd been at one six fortieth of a second, which is oddly enough one of those shutter speeds, I don't know why, um, then that dog would have been frozen in time, you know? Um, because a low shutter speed, but sometimes you want that. Like if someone's like uh, swinging a baseball bat, you might want it to be blurry so you see that smooth motion, you know? But you might not. Because um, you might want to get the ball hovering right before they hit it with the bat. So you would want to be at really high shutter speed. Um, but if you go to manual, and as long, the only time I would say a new person shouldn't shoot in manual 
is when you're shooting something critical, um, like if you get suckered into shootings like someone's engagement or some something important and you're like, oh God, I, I, like I can't do any learning today, you know, then I would very much consider, um, you know, deciding what's the most important thing you get. You know, is it a, something moving? Then I would probably go to the shutter priority. If it's um, in a darker room, you know, like, like I don't know, a surprise engagement or your daughter's birthday, you want to get her blowing out the candles, I would put it in aperture priority. You know, put that the aperture way down so I know I'm sucking in that light. Um, so get the manual. Don't buy one of these and leave it in auto. Now, if you did buy one of these and you do leave it in auto, you should sell it. Like you can buy a like point and shoot cameras are awesome now. And they're great at that. And they're a lot less and they would serve you just as fine. But if you got one, you should definitely play with, with being in manual because being manual is fun, it's rewarding, and uh, kind of makes this, you know, makes the hobby the hobby, you know. Um, one last thing about all this, um, if you're going to take these photos and tinker on your computer with them in Lightroom, I suggest Lightroom. It's 10 bucks a month. I, I don't like it either, but it is what it is. Um, shoot darker than you think um, it is much easier to recover darkness your camera's taking data from the darkness that you can bring out in Lightroom there's an auto button that actually works pretty good a lot of the times you have to go and fiddle but you could put darker photos in Lightroom and hit auto and things will magically appear um, the opposite is not true because when things are bright, they're blown out, they're pure white, there's no, there's, there probably is coming back from it, not in my experience. So, I hope this is a good um, starter video. This is the kind of stuff I, I like, I like doing. I feel like I can cover some basics. Um, I might do a video about kind of basic Lightroom stuff too, eventually. Uh, but this is my kind of intro to, um, to getting a camera and, uh, Maybe we'll do one about like, uh, so your camera's going to come with a kit lens and then as you can see I'm not down with that. Maybe we'll talk about that next. So, hope you enjoyed this.